and welcome to www.learnquickbooksfree.com uh, Lesson C, Part 2 of Accounts Receivable. So this is pretty much set at this point, but the only thing I don't see over here is designating where you want to make this deposit into what account, into which bank account and so on. Uh, so what we have to do at this point, which so this is something you can do in the beginning, uh, but at this point we're going to go under edit, we're going to go to preferences, we're going to go to sales and customers, then we're going to go to company preferences, and this last box over here, use undeposited funds as a default deposit to accounts. And we're going to uncheck that, and we're going to get hit OK. And then we're going to hit OK again. And not once again, all these messages. I'm going to write not now. So basically, it saved it, but now what I got to do is I got to go back to customers, back to enter sales receipt. I'm going to go back to this. And as you can see, now a new little section came up. It's called deposit to. Okay, so this is very important. Uh, so now that we know we got this from our, mer our first merchant. Where does this go into? Most likely it's going to go into our WF merchant account because this was a merchant payment. So now I'm going to hit save and uh, uh, switch it, hit save and new. Yes, and there you go. So let's go ahead and now do customer job B. Okay, uh, same day. This is all examples, it really doesn't matter. Check number, let's say for this one we got a check. So check number was 111002. So we received the check. And then for this one, we're going to say that we received a set of uh, the, um, bookkeeping services. Let's say we did, um, let's say we went ahead and did tax services. How's that? Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and set that up. So this is going to be an, uh, a service. The last one I did non-inventory part. You can also make it a service. I should have made the other one a service. I'm going to show you how to change that. So let's go ahead and make this a service tax services. Now I'm just going to write tax services over here. Uh, I'm not going to put anything under rate. And there we go. Tax preparation service income. It's an income account right over here. And I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to say quantity one. It was a flat rate of $99. So I got the check and I deposited the same day. So this, if you're going to make a sales receipt, that means that you got the check and you deposited the same day or you're going to make the date the day you deposited not the date you received the check very important for reconciliation over here I'm gonna switch it to the checking account and I'm gonna hit save and new okay so as we know right now under items I created two items but one I wrote non inventory let's go ahead and switch that up so I'm gonna to go to customers item list as you can see there you see the two items I wanna change this one right here and I'm going to make this into a service instead. And there you go. I hit OK, OK, and there you go. Now they're both services instead of non-inventory part. Okay? So that's basically how you record uh, sales. Okay? So let's look at the two sales that we have. We have customer job A, customer job B. If we go back to customer, customer center. So as you can see, under customer job A, we have that 625. Oh, let me make this a little bit smaller. Okay. Under customer job A, you'll see 625. Under job B, you'll see $99. And under customer 1, you'll see the total all of them combined together. Okay. Reason you see a zero over here because it's still they don't owe anything cuz they've already paid it. But let's go ahead and create an invoice at this point. Uh, you could do it through here by the way. This is another place to do it, but uh, for me, it just things get too cluttered. So I don't like to have too many windows open. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I'm going to close this out. I'm going to go to customers. And now I'm going to go to create invoice. Okay. So let's go ahead and create an invoice. And now we're going to go ahead and do customer 2. Okay, 531. If they don't have any terms yet, it could be due on receipt. It could be whatever you want it to be. We're going to do due on receipt. Uh, items going to be, uh, let's say, tax services. 
Uh, and once again, you can put whatever you want into the description. You can, you know, write extra comments, hours, or we're going to do 25 hours at $25. There you go, 625. Let's switch it up just to make it a little bit unique. Okay. And at this point, you can print it. Okay. All of these, by the way, you can print it for to have a paper copy if you want. You don't have to. Another thing you can do with this is basically send an email, okay, to your customer. So if you're going to send an email, it's going to say you have changed customer two. Would you like to have this new information appear next time? Yes. And there you go. Now it's going to automatically see how we it brought up that email address, and you can customize this as well. So there's a lot of things you can do, but for now. Um, we're not going to show you how to customize this right now. This is something we can show you later on. But for now, the idea of the invoices. So you have your invoice over here. And you're going to hit uh, Save and New. Okay, and let's just do another one. Let's do Back to Customer Job A. And we're going to go ahead and do uh, what is it? Tax Services. 10 hours at $30. Whatever it may be, we're going to hit Save and New. Uh, do you want to learn more? No okay and let's do customer job B and you see I, how it defaulted to net 30 which is what we set it up for and then we're gonna go ahead and do uh, item we're gonna go ahead and do uh, what was it accounting bookkeeping services there we go 10 hours at $20 an hour we're gonna hit save new let's save and close it and let's go back to customers customer center so there you there you go. Customer two, as you can see, that three hundred dollar invoice that we set up, and that's why there's a three hundred dollar balance. Job A under customer one is three hundred dollars. Job B is two hundred dollars for a combined total of five hundred dollars. So that's basically how you enter invoices and how you see balances that are owed to you. That's one way. We're going to show you under reports how to do it other ways. Okay. So now let's say. Uh, you just got payment for job A. So how do you receive the payment? Okay, so I'm going to X out over here. I'm going to go to customers, receive payments. Okay. Now, uh, under receive payments, we're going to go to, let's say, customer A, uh, customer 1. But under customer 1, you can see there's job A and job B. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring it to job A so that way I could just see the one that I got payment for. You could do it either way. And the amount, now if you got partial payment, you could do that. You don't have to receive the full $300. Let's say you just got 50% um, right now. So we're gonna do half of that. And let's say the date was 531, that's fine. It doesn't really matter on the dates right now. Payment method, same idea. If you, if you got a credit card payment uh, through your first merchant, we're gonna do merchant one. Reference number was the actual authorization number. Dash, Visa, Amex, whatever that may be. Okay, memo. You don't have to put anything under memo. And deposited to. Remember, that's, this is our merchant account where we accept all our merchant payments to. So I'm going to choose this account. It's very important you choose the right accounts because it's going to make reconciliation easy. And that way you don't have to figure out why, where am I missing all these transactions when you reconcile. So, you know, be very, you know, take your time and be very careful that you're putting things in the right place because it's going to save you headaches later on. And there you go, save and new. So now we just received one payment. Let's see what happens then. So we go to customer, customer center. There you go. As you can see now it's not $300 anymore. Now it's $150. And as you can see over here, there was an accounts receivable for 300 but you got a payment for 150 okay so that's basically the idea of how you receive payments um, from customers whether it's an invoice or a sales receipt okay and we're going to be showing you a little bit more features uh, in other sections but this is really the idea of, of how you accept payments uh, into uh, QuickBooks okay uh, there's another way of accepting payments, and I'm going to show you that right now. It's called it's under banking, and it's make deposits. Okay, uh, this is maybe where you've actually made a personal deposit into your bank, and it's not a customer. 
So what you can do is we're going to go under Wells Fargo ch uh, checking account or we're going to put it under savings account. Let's do that. And received from. So let's say we're going to call it the owner, owner's name. Since we don't have one set up, we're going to do a quick add. Over here, I don't need to set it up because I know it's me. So I'm just going to do quick add. And I'm going to go ahead and do, you can do employee or other. If, you're, if it's a corporation and you're an employee, go ahead and do employee. Uh, but I would just do under other for this one. And I'm going to hit OK. And then from account, remember that loans payable officer? There you go. That's the account we want to use if you actually put money into your company. Okay? So it's recorded as an equity. Okay? And you don't have to put any uh, memo. Check number if you're depositing a check, you can put check number 1002. Or if you didn't put a check, you can just say it was cash. And then the amount, we put $5,700 into our business. So we're going to hit save and new. So this is another way of recording deposits into your bank account or whatever account you may want to be. Uh, I don't recommend using this for customers because it's not going to have as much details. So um, uh, be very picky when you use this part over here. And that concludes this lesson. Uh, you can visit our website at www.learnquickbooksfree.com to watch more videos.